Hello and welcome back to the Aliens Love Earth podcast, where we explore the intersection of art and sustainability. I'm your host Jasper Hermes and today we're diving into a topic that affects every music fan but rarely gets discussed. The environmental impact of streaming. Millions of songs at our fingertips feel like a win for music lovers, but what's the hidden cost to our planet? Let's find that out. Streaming is often seen as a more sustainable way to consume music. No physical waste, no shipping, and instant access to an entire universe of sound. But is it truly greener? The reality is more complicated. While digital music has eliminated plastic waste from CDs and vinyl, it has introduced a new problem. Energy intensive data centers, server farms, and network infrastructure that requires enormous amounts of electricity. And since much of this electricity still comes from fossil fuels, our listening habits might have a bigger carbon footprint than we think. On-demand streaming feels intangible, but it relies on vast data centers running 24-7, requiring immense energy. According to studies, the carbon footprint of streaming has surpassed that of physical music formats like CDs and vinyl. Every time we hit play, servers, networks and our devices use electricity, and much of it is still powered by fossil fuels. A single song streamed repeatedly by millions adds up. One study from the University of Glasgow estimated that the music industry's carbon emissions have actually increased in the streaming era, despite reduced plastic production from CDs and vinyls. So, while digital feels cleaner, the reality is more complex. To put this into perspective, every stream requires data to be sent from a server to your device. That data travels through undersea cables, Wi-Fi networks and power-hungry servers housed in massive warehouses. Studies suggest that streaming an album more than 27 times uses more energy than producing and shipping a physical CD. Multiply that by billions of streams worldwide and the numbers become staggering. If we compare streaming to buying physical copies, the results are surprising. A CD or vinyl record has a one-time carbon cost from production, shipping and packaging. But once owned, playing it requires minimal energy compared to repeated streaming from the cloud. If you listen to an entire album dozens of times, the physical version could have a lower footprint than streaming it endlessly. That said, physical formats have their own issues. Vinyl production involves petrochemicals and CDs contribute to plastic waste. The key takeaway? How we consume music matters just as much as the format itself. Vinyl records, for example, are made of polyvinyl chloride, PVC, a petroleum-based product that has significant environmental concerns. The resurgence of vinyl in recent years has brought back a love for analog sound, but at an environmental cost. On the other hand, CDs, while producing plastic waste, require less energy for playback over time compared to endless streaming. The trade-offs are complex, and the best choice depends on individual listening habits. Streaming services aren't ignoring the issue. Spotify and Apple Music have pledged carbon neutrality goals and Bandcamp encourages direct artist support with digital downloads that don't require constant restreaming. Some platforms are also exploring renewable energy for data centers, but progress is slow. Artists are taking action too. Some are selling high quality digital downloads to encourage more sustainable listening, while others are using greener merch and touring practices to offset emissions. Could a future model reward eco-conscious listening habits? Tidal has experimented with higher royalty payouts for artists, encouraging listeners to be more intentional with their streams. Meanwhile, platforms like Bandcamp offer music downloads as an alternative to continuous streaming, allowing fans to own their music files outright. Some artists are even releasing music on eco-friendly vinyl made from recycled materials. These solutions, while promising, require more widespread adoption to create meaningful change. We might not ditch streaming entirely, but small changes can make a difference. Download your favorite album instead of streaming them repeatedly. Support artists directly through Bandcamp or buying physical media when possible. If you listen more than 27 times to a full album, for example. Choose lower energy devices. Think about wired speakers over Bluetooth for playback. Push for change by supporting platforms that invest in green energy solutions. Additionally, listeners can help by adjusting their habits. Turn off autoplay, use offline mode more often, and advocate for cleaner energy in tech. Even something as simple as lowering your video quality on YouTube music can cut down on energy consumption. If enough listeners push for sustainable solutions, platforms may accelerate their transition to greener energy resources. As music lovers, we have the power to shift the industry towards sustainability. Let's keep the conversation going. What are your thoughts on the carbon impact of streaming? Have you changed the way you listened because of it? Drop a comment and let's talk. And remember, 
every new follower helps us restore one square meter of landscape where it's needed the most. So hit that follow button and be part of the change. Until next time, keep creating, stay green, and talk to you soon.